Good evening, and let me wish you Merry Christmas. My name is Robbie Plemons, and I'm the pastor of Cross Point Presbyterian Church. And I want to welcome you tonight to our first ever virtual Christmas Eve candlelight service. As we begin our Christmas celebration, will you please pray with me? Gracious Lord, be the God of our Christmas celebration. We rejoice with the shepherds over the good news of Jesus' birth. We join in the praises of the angelic choir and say, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. Almighty God, you have favored us with the greatest gift ever given, your only begotten Son, light of true light, God of true God. May we never take this, your gift, for granted. May our songs of praise never fade, and may we treasure it in our hearts always and forever. Bless all of us here gathered in worship, as well as our loved ones who are scattered across the country and around the world. May the peace and joy ring in our hearts and reverberate through our communities tonight in the name of Jesus, the newborn King. Amen. Good evening and Merry Christmas. I'm Jason Sayre. Tonight I want to share with you an old, old story. It's a story of love, of sacrifice, and of mystery. It's a story that's so grand that it encompasses the entire universe. A story that's so old that it begins before the dawn of history. And a story that's so diverse that it includes people from every tribe, tongue, and nation. It's a story of love, joy, hope, and a baby. But it's not just an ordinary baby. It's Emmanuel, God with us. This story, God's story, reminds us that Christ brings us the hope that there's more to this life than the world that we live in. It reminds us that Jesus offers each and every one of us a peace that defies all human reason, that his love is unconditional and eternal, and that the joy God offers is indescribable. This story has all the makings of fiction, but it's not fiction. It's all true. Tonight, we celebrate what happened on the first Christmas over 2,000 years ago. But there were those before that who longed greatly for his coming. The story Christ first started first with a promise from God and anticipation in the heart of Israel. Christ was prophesied to Israel, and for hundreds of years, they watched and waited expectantly for the Messiah that would come to ransom them and set them free. O come, divine Messiah, speaks strongly of this longing for the Christ that is our Emmanuel, Deliverer. Christ is God with us in all things. As the people of Israel waited for the coming Messiah we know as Jesus, so too we are able to remember and wait for Christ's return.
Hi, I'm Will Prim, and this is my wife, Lauren Prim. Tonight I'll be reading from Isaiah 60, 1 through 5. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. For the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of the men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Happy more. 
And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Luke 2, 8-14 We have heard on high, sweetly singing only, and the mountains and high echoing their joy straight in eggshell seas. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Matthew 1, 18-25 
child, is this a way to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whom angels greet with anthem sweet, while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Such pain as where ox and mass are feeding. Good Christians fear for sinners here. The silent word is pleading. Bell, spear shall pierce and through the cross he bore for me. And scold and mirth, come peasant king to own you. The king of kings, salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. Raise, raise a song on high. The virgin sings a lullaby. Joy, joyful. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. For this saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Good evening. 
My name is David Allenbach, and I'd like to thank you for participating in our Christmas Eve candlelight service. Whether you're in the Park City area or somewhere else in the country, I'm glad that you've chosen to share your Christmas Eve with us. One quick announcement before we turn our attention to God's Word. We will resume gathering in person for worship on January 10th, 2021. So if you're in the Park City area and you're looking for a church that takes a Christian faith seriously, prioritizes the Lord's Day corporate worship, loves the Word of God, celebrates the sacraments, then you've come to the right place. We hope that you'll join us in person again on January 10th when we resume meeting in person for corporate worship. Tonight is a very special night. Tonight we gather to celebrate the most important story and event in the history of the world. We celebrate God's tremendous love, his covenant promises, and his redemption of this fallen world through Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Before we start, let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature. In your mercy, by the power of the Holy Spirit, grant that we may share the divine life of Jesus Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Tonight we will look at Genesis 28. This may not be the typical biblical text you think of during the Christmas season, but my hope is through that reading God's word, we would come to understand the importance of Jesus' birth here on earth. Let me read our passage from Genesis 28, beginning in verse 10. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran, and he came to a certain place and stayed there that night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of this place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of the Lord were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give you and your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you, your offspring shall all the families on the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! There is none other than the house of the Lord, and this is the gate of heaven. In verse 12, we see a ladder. It's probably a vast stone ramp with steps. The phrase, the top of it reached to the heavens, recalled the description of the Tower of Babel, which we will come back to in a moment. Jacob may have seen a ziggurat, similar to what we have discovered in Mexico and Central America. In Jacob's dream, we see earth and heaven and the angels of God ascending and descending. The location of Jacob's dream is highly significant because of the direct link he sees between heaven and earth. Jacob names this place Bethel to underline this connection. Bethel translate, translated means house of God, and he is anticipating a time in the future when God's presence will fill the earth. Jacob's dream of a meeting place between heaven and earth points forward in God's redemptive plan to Jesus Christ, the God-man who is able to finally reunite heaven and earth. The importance and significance of this story is not just told to us in the Old Testament, but becomes a significant theme in the New Testament as well. We read in the book of John where Jesus says to Nathanael in John 1 verse 51, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. 
This verse in, in John alludes to what Jacob saw in his vision of a ladder or a stairway stretching, stretching from the earth to heaven on which angels ascended to worship God and descended to do his bidding on earth. As Jacob slept, his resting place became a temple, a house of God. Jesus himself is the reality to which the stairway pointed in the dream. Jacob only saw the reunion of heaven and earth in a dream. In reality, Christ is the end time sanctuary in which God communes with his people. Later in the book of John, in a conversation with Nicodemus, Jesus says, No one has ever ascended into heaven except who, he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. What Jesus is saying to Nicodemus is that it is only Jesus, through his person and work, who can bridge the gap between heaven and earth. It's nothing that we do. We see that Jesus is the communication, the connection between heaven and earth. In another instance in the book of John, we hear a question to Jesus from the disciple Thomas. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now Thomas has confusion about Jesus' destination and route at his departure and prompts another I am announcement from Jesus. He is going to the Father, and he is the only road by which anyone may approach God. Jesus, and only hours away from the agony of Gethsemane, and yet here he is comforting the disciples when he tells them in verse 3, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, that there where I am you may be also. When Jesus says, take, to, take you myself, he is comparing himself to a ladder between heaven and earth. He is the one who takes his people to heaven. Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Fundamentally, there's affirmation of both Old Testament and New Testament. We see that there's one mediator, a mediator, a person who attempts to make people involved in a conflict to come to an agreement, a go-between, between God and men. There's only one mediator who is a person independent or an independent body that reach an authoritative judgment or settlement between God and humanity and reconciles them. We see that this is Jesus. We read that we have access to the Father through Jesus in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles, prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. In contrast, in Genesis 11, we read about the Tower of Babel. Some scholars identify the towers of 300-foot-high Temple Ziggurat of Marduk in Babylon. Verse 4 reads, Then they say, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top into the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves. This description suggests a monumental effort motivated by pride. Human beings this time embark on a titanic attempt at corporate self-assertion, again, sacrilegiously challenging God. The Sumerians who lived in modern-day Iraq would build temples to house their gods because it was believed that the gods lived in the mountains. This makes sense because the mountains are the closest place on earth to heaven. That's why when we talk about mountaintop experiences, this makes sense. These temples were artificial mountains with God's presence at the summit. The god would typically be located at the top of the staircase and a person would walk up on the temple stairs 
and doing so would ascend to their God. Just like Genesis 11, these temples repeat man's failed ascent to heaven. Because no matter how hard we try, no matter how many good deeds we do, no matter how big we build the temple, we can never climb the ladder to heaven. Salvation is not something we do by our own work or effort. It's God who has come to save us. That is why in Jacob's dream in Genesis 28 is a foreshadowing of Jesus' descent to earth. We see Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. He is the connection to heaven. Jesus came down to be with us and will one day return to take us home where we will live eternally with the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We see this beautiful thread running through God's word when we compare these stories. If we take the time to look, we see the plan for Christmas goes all the way back to the book of Genesis. Tonight, I don't know where you are or what you're going through. I do know that there is a lot going in the world and that kind of uncertainty can make us scared. Scared about the future, scared for our families. I'm a dad. It's not unusual for us to hear cries in the middle of the night at our house. Recently, it's been my son who's had bad dreams. When you're four, the world is big and scary, especially at night when you don't know what is out there waiting for you. What do you think I do when this happens? Do I yell at him from my bedroom? You're four years old. Get over it. No, I get up and I go into his room. I stand next to his bed and hold his hand or rub his back and remind him that everything's going to be okay because dad is here. The story of Christmas reminds us that we may, while we may be scared about the things going on in our life and the world, we know as God's covenant people, we don't have to face these things alone. Everything is going to be okay because God is here with us. This Christmas, we can again be reminded of the good news that God is with us because Jesus, Emmanuel, is God with us. Let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this season, this time to be reminded that the only hope that we need is in you and in your Son. We thank you for his birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection. We thank you for in him and what he did, we've been restored. That we can be in good relationship with you, our God and Father. This season, may we rejoice at what you've done through your gospel. May we celebrate and find hope. We love and praise you. Amen. Please join us as we sing Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. Sons employed, while fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy. Love and wonders.
wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. Tonight we've been celebrating the most joyous event in all of history, the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ. The question is not if you're celebrating, the question is how. Does your celebration end with only remembering and acknowledging the gift God gave from Jesus? Does it end with commemorating the gift with family celebrations, gift giving, and Christmas cheer? Or does it really mean something more to you? Will you stop and let Christmas make you different this year? Just like the shepherds and wise men, we have been made aware of the birth of the Christ child. No longer do we stand as a passerby in Bethlehem. Our understanding calls us to a responsibility that far outweighs the presents we buy and to get together as we plan. We have a decision to stop and worship or remain unchanged. Our hope this Christmas is that you would allow this year to be different. That despite the holidays, you would find Christmas. You would find Jesus. Jesus was not sent only to be a baby in a manger or remembered in Christmas carols and services. He was sent to be a savior, a savior for each and every one of us. His life purpose was to go to the cross and purchase for us what we could not purchase for ourselves, our right standing in peace with God. It's because of the sin in our hearts, we are unable to make right our wrongs against God. We need someone who is like us, human in every way, to make us right the debt we owe. But we also need someone like God sufficiently capable capable, and able to fix us where we are broken, mend us and make us right in his presence. Because we can't pay the debt we owe, we never could and we never will. Because God loves us and because he knew we could never make things right, in his holy, awesome and merciful way, God sent his son, his only son, completely like us and completely like God the only person ever able to make us right before the Father. And so we are offered salvation, eternal life, and access to God's presence, no matter who we are. No matter where we are, no matter where we've been, all we have to do is ask Him, and that's something worth celebrating. As we draw this celebration to a close, we'd like to invite you to sing a final carol with us. Probably the most well-known and most loved Christmas hymn, Silent Night. Normally, as we sing, we would light each candle one by one, reminding us that Jesus is the light of the world, and whoever follows him will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. But since we're meeting virtually, we decided to use the video from last year's service. While it isn't the same, the truth that Jesus is the light of the world is still very much real this year, as it is always.
this Christmas, may you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May God bless you now and forever. Amen.